In Good Shape, your health magazine on DW, featuring an interview with a different expert every week. And today I'm with Dr. Bauer, who is a chief physician of the Lung Clinic, Heckeshorn. Hello. Hello. Um, the fight against tuberculosis is a real big fight. Uh, so, so why is it so? It's just a bacterial infection. Why can't you just give some antibiotics? Yes, you're right. It's a bacterial infection, but the bacteria multiply very slowly. That means that we have to give antibiotics for a long time and a couple of antibiotics. For a usual, normal, regular pneumonia, we treat seven to eight days. For tuberculosis, we have a minimum of six months. How, how do you get infected by tuberculosis in the first place? It's usually a respiratory infection, so person by person. It's uh, hardly any time a smear infection, as we call it, when you get something in your eye, for example. So, so a smear infection would mean if I'm in the room together with someone who has tuberculosis and he leaves the room, I can still get infected by just touching a door handle? No, no, it's not that contagious. This is a very unregular way. Good. And what are the first symptoms of patients uh, come to you when, when you suspect tuberculosis? Yeah. People do cough, they do have night sweats, and they lose weight. Okay. So, so one of the first signs and symptoms is losing weight? Yeah. Okay. And, and if the patient comes to you, um, what do you do with them? If we have a suspicion of uh, pulmonary tuberculosis, we do a chest x-ray. That's the major point. So that's a normal thing, and, and you see the lung on the picture, and, and I would like to see some picture of tuberculosis. You've got one here. Yeah, we can have a look. Okay, great. So here we have a chest x-ray. Yeah, this is a chest x-ray, like um, we have a, the heart here, we have the two lungs here, and what we can see are the small opacities here, little nodules, which are suspicious of tuberculosis. So opacities mean white spots. Yeah, white spots. So, so and in those white spots, are there the bacteria? There are the bacteria, and the body tries to get rid of those bacteria, but can't, and then he builds granuloma on these granulomas we do see here. Okay, so, so when you see this kind of x-ray, what would be the next step? In Germany, the next step would be to do a chest uh, um, a CT scan, because there are other diseases that can mimic tuberculosis. Okay, so and, and this is a CT scan here? This is a CT scan, right. and we cut the person like this, and what we can see here is part of the heart, we have the lungs here, and we can see the small nodules here as well. And when we go a little bit further up, we see also so-called large opacities here, which also belong to the tuberculosis. So, so this mass here is, is not malign, it's, it's a tuberculosis? Probably. Okay, pro probably, okay. So, so there's a difference between um, the contagious and a non-contagious tuberculosis. Yeah, it's a very important difference for the surrounding of, of the person who has tuberculosis, and it depends whether tuberculosis bacteria appear in the sputum. What you can see here are the airways, and when the bacteria go into the airways, you have a contagious disease. And can you see this on the CT scan? No. This is something the microbiologist tells us. And if, if I would meet a patient with a non-contagious tuberculosis, I wouldn't be at any risk getting it? You are at risk because it's not a one-zero decision, okay. but you are at low risk. Okay. So if you've got a patient with tuberculosis, what's the first-line treatment? First-line treatment is an antibiotic treatment, and in contrast to other infections of the lung, we need six months of treatment, two months with four drugs, and four months with two drugs. And it's a very difficult treatment? Not really. We, we need a compliant patient, so he has to take the medicine every day for six months, which is basically the problem. The growing resistance of the bacteria is a worldwide problem. So, so how comes that the bacteria get resistant in the first place? Well, it's usually a failure to comply to the therapy we have. So we need six months of therapy, and if the patients drop out earlier than that, they do induce resistance into the bacteria. So it's a problem of the therapy and of, of ending the therapy too early. Yeah, exactly. So if a patient is infected by tuberculosis bacteria, um, how does he know that he's got the resistant bacteria? Yeah, we need to get a hand on the bacteria, either on the bacteria itself or on its genetic code, to tell whether it's resistant or not. So, so you're taking some samples out of the patient and get it into the lab? Yeah, exactly, and then the microbiologist will tell us whether it's resistant or not. 
And do you do this on a regular basis and with every single patient or just if the treatment is not working in the first place? Well, it depends where you are in, the, in, in, in our world. In Germany, here in our clinic, we do it on a regular basis, although a resistant tuberculosis is a very rare event. So, and, and if this is a resistant tuberculosis, what do you do then? That means that we have to use other antibiotics, more antibiotics, longer antibiotics and these antibiotics do have substantial side effects. And you have to take care that the patient is taking these antibiotics and not, not ending the therapy uh, too early. Exactly. Then we may have go, then we may go from MDR, multidrug resistant tuberculosis, to XDR. Here in Germany, tuberculosis is not that big a problem. Uh, but if you take a look at the situation worldwide, you would see that tuberculosis is very widespread. So we prepared a map of the world, and you can see here all the continents with colors. And uh, the color red is indicating if there is a tuberculosis, and if it's a very dark red, there are a lot of tuberculosis cases. So um, what would you have to do to fight tuberculosis worldwide? Well, I think it's a major distribution problem. We do have good drugs. We, when we have a sensible tuberculosis, we can cure it. But we need to bring the drugs to the patients, and the patients have to comply with the therapy. We got some viewer questions um, from Pakistan. Malika Butaina has tuberculosis, and now she's getting pregnant, and she wants to know how to, to treat the tuberculosis. When it's a sensible strain, a regular tuberculosis, these four drugs can be taken during pregnancy. And it's, is it important to, to treat it? Yeah, it's better to take the drugs than to get the tuberculosis during pregnancy. Okay, so don't wait for delivery. No, please Just don't. do it in pregnancy. Okay, and Alina Rudenko from Ukraine um, has written that she's got a son, he's six years old, and he catched the tuberculosis. And now she wants to know how to help the kid and if there is some treatment options for kids. In Ukraine, we have a special problem because we have a, a high prevalence of multi drug resistant tuberculosis. So, first thing is she needs to know whether it's a sensible or drug-resistant tuberculosis and then kids are treated the same way as adults but the doses are lower of course. Dr. Bauer, thanks so much for inviting me into your hospital. Thanks. So Thank much. you.